everybody. Thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz, and today we are here for Quick Tip Thursday. Today's topic is Selective Focus Made Simple with Topaz Lens Effects. Within lens effects, you have several ways to improve or change your depth of field, not actually change it, but simulate, simulate a change of depth of field, allowing for you to really pinpoint your focal point and get all those distracting elements that are in your backgrounds um, less distracting by blurring them. So we're going to take a look at several different ways to do that here today. Let me go ahead and hop on out of that. Here we go. We'll start off with this image of my girl here on the field. All right, so we're just going to do a quick background copy and hop on into Topaz Labs, Topaz Lens Effects. Focus Center Focus is going to be the very top effect that you have over here on the top left, and you can just click on it. And it's going to be the simplest and easiest way to add in um, a selective focal point to your image and start blurring the rest of your image. When you click on Focus Center Focus, you'll notice that the, the middle of your image becomes in focus and it starts blurring along the edges of that uh, point. Well, it's very simple to just go ahead and click exactly where you want your focal point. You just open up the bokeh adjustments over here on the right, click on Effect Center, choose the center wherever you want to put it. I'm going to go ahead and maybe put it right here on her neck or so. There we go. And then you can come in, you can change your blur amount and go really, 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 really blurry. I'm going to take my transition down so you can see exactly how big that focal point is right now. The transition is going to change the how quickly the blur is actually uh, transitioning into your focal point. But it also allows for you to, when you take that transition down, see exactly where your focal point is. So I'm just going to take my focus width down now. There we go, my focus height down. Now I can make a much more exact transition around my subject. And that's good right there, but now I'm going to take my blur amount down and get that to a place where I can really just focus in on her and get rid of all the rest of the distracting elements within this image. And it's as simple as that. I'm going to take that blur down just a little bit more, those transitions up. Okay, so here's before, and here's after. Just blurred the background. I'm able, my view goes directly to my subject now, and all those distractions, all those visual elements are blurred out and softer so my eye isn't drawn to them. So that is the bokeh center focus. The next one I want to talk to you about is one of my favorites. It's the tilt shift camera. That is a very simple way to get a focal plane versus a focal point. And that is, if you, are, if you like those types of images where you can create miniatures or um, you like the effect of a traditional tilt shift camera or tilt shift lens, then you can achieve that very quickly within that particular effect. So let me open that up. We'll use this one. All right, so here is before and here is after. And as you can see, you j I just blurred the bottom portion and the top portion of this image. Let me open up one more so you can see that again. I really like this bench's image. It really takes away the distracting element of the in-focus houses in the background of this image of these benches. And when applying that tilt-shift camera effect, I was able to eliminate that in the background and have um, just the focal plane directly where I wanted it. So let's go through that really quickly. Most of these more simple uh, ways to create selective focus within your image and lens effects are going to be just a couple buttons and you're good to go. So let's go down to this camera tilt shift effect. And by default, I believe this is just the top left to bottom right um, focal plane. But you can just open up your tilt shift adjustments, choose where you want the effect position to be, and I'd like it to be on my bench. So I'm just going to click right there. It'll jump right there. And then I'm going to change the angle of my tilt shift effect here to be more horizontal across. I'll get there eventually. There we go. <laughs> and now that I have the exact 
angle that I want, now I can come in and change my transition. Maybe make that a little bit more longer transition, opening up that focal plane. And I can even come in and take that blur amount down, get it exactly where I want it to be. And now my focus is selectively on these benches versus anywhere else in my picture. Here's before. Here's after. So that is another option that you have within lens effects to work with um, blurring your background and, and getting that out of the way. Now I have some questions about why don't we just do this in the camera. You absolutely can if you, and I, I believe you should, if you have the equipment, if you have the lens, if you have um, the right camera, then by all means it's going to be easier um, within your camera to work with it. But if you get this picture and you didn't realize at the time, or if you take this picture and you didn't realize at the time that maybe this um, is distracting, and you didn't shoot with a really um, the right aperture or anything, then you can come into lens effects and work with it that way. Let me go ahead and pull up one other image because I want to show you something else that people don't really think about when working with lens effects. Here we go. All right, so in this particular image, you have everything basically in focus. And then we have our little girl and dog. And if I wanted to make both of their faces the focal points but really blur everything else, you're able to do that with that dual focus lens. And here's after. Let me go ahead and make a background copy here. And just going to filter Topaz lens effects. I'm going to come down to my dual focus lens effect over here on the left. Click on that. And there aren't any presets within here because it's really hard for any of those presets to actually help in this particular effect. So all you need to do is come over to your dual focus adjustments on the top right, click on that, and click on next focus point. When you click on that and you scroll into your image, you'll see the crosshairs and you just click on one of their faces. I'm going to click on the dog here first, and then I'm going to click on next focus point again and click on her face. And now that I have both of those focal points chosen, I can come in and I can work with my blur amount. As I take that up, you'll see their faces will stay in focus. I can change the transition, make that a little softer of a transition, or make it a very hard transition. I'm going to go with much softer here and take my blur down just a little. The other thing you can come in and do is play with your focus area size on both of your focal points. So just come in and you can change your width. This is actually for her face and your height of each one to get it exactly where you want it to be. So here is before and after. Let me show you that one more time. Before and after. Thank you for joining us for Quick Tip Thursday. I hope that you have learned how to quickly and simply make selective focus or create selective focus within your image using lens effects after the shot. So have a great afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you are, and we'll be talking to you soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.